About a month ago, I purchased what's called on eBay a Funlux 8 camera wireless camera surveillance system, basically. And I'm really happy with it. I'll tell you off the bat, I really, really like this thing for the price and what this thing can do, the value and the features you get are is crazy. I can't even imagine, could never even imagine that I saw this on eBay. I was like, whoa what they're claiming it does, and it does all of that. Now, there are some negative reviews. If you're searching around on Google, looking at buying that thing, uh, that's what I did, and I almost got discouraged from buying it because there's some negative reviews. Uh, people complaining about cameras dropping out, not connecting the camera, setting it up, being a problem, et cetera, et cetera. 99% of that, I'm gonna tell you right now, is gonna be your router because these cameras don't connect directly to the NVR they send you. That just records a video and gives you an operating system used with a mouse and a monitor to play back surveillance video. And it's really, really nice what it does. But this, the cameras actually connect to your existing router you have in your home uh, network, your 2.4 gigahertz band on your router. So you're gonna need a good router. Now I've tried quite a few routers when I got this. I went through with three or four routers, I think three, yeah, three. A TP-Link, I tried my cable router combo, cable modem router combo, which was actually not that bad. Then I got this TP-Link router and it was garbage for the 2.4 gigahertz. The five gigahertz band on it was probably fine. Not knocking TP-Link, but did not work with these cameras at all. So avoid those. I got a Netgear R6400 uh, router. This is an AC1750 router, 450 mega, megabits a second on the 2.4 gigahertz band. And it is amazingly solid with these cameras, with this system. So I'm gonna recommend that router. And that will solve 99% of your issues with this thing. So obviously I went ahead and purchased this even though the reviews almost discouraged me from buying it. But when you're buying stuff on eBay, you're always protected as a buyer. You're never gonna get screwed over as a buyer on eBay with anything, I'm gonna tell you that right now. So I got it, fiddled with it a lot. I'm gonna tell you that right now because I did not have an internet connection uh, at my house, first I tether my phone. I, I have unlimited crazy grandfather unlimited data plan. I'd, I'm not paying for this this uh, freaking monopoly internet they got. With, we only can only get Time Warner cable here. One provider, they own the line, so it's a total rip off. But anyways, I ended up getting it. Pay a bajillion dollars a month for the slowest internet ever, but I got it now so I can watch my surveillance cameras on my phone remotely. Let's bring it up here for you right now. We're connected to my Wi-Fi, to my five gigahertz band. This is the MeShare app. I'm gonna bring it up. Live cameras, guys, right here. Now right there is the front of my house. That is live. You can turn your phone this way. That's live and running great. You can see there's another camera. There's my, and it's dark looking because it's, outside the camera adjusted to it. it usually looks really good the night vision on these cameras works really good as well it's the back of my house this is my living room this this camera for some reason always takes a second to load no matter what that's my living room camera though and i have it set to the uh night vision you can actually set it to leave the night vision on all the time and i do that because it doesn't want to kick on sometimes on the camera I'm showing you here that this this thing works like they say that's the side of my house and then this is my front door camera and it's all white outside we've got snow on the ground but it's pretty awesome it's really cool actually um, what this thing does once you get it set up and get all the bugs worked out now some of the most impressive things about this me share app now they have a Funlux app that you can use but honestly use the me share app it's the same thing but it has more features they update it more often so, uh, cause the, these cameras are branded from Z Moto. They have a couple different name brands, so don't worry about it. Use the MeShare app. Now, one of the cool features, you can actually set it to away when you leave and it will give you motion detection. Now it's also, even, even if it's not giving you push notifications on your phone, it's still in here motion. This is all the motion it's showing. And it actually works really good. Um, you can see my dog was eating in the kitchen there. A school bus drove by on the front and the school bus would, and if you go so far it actually show you like a gif of a couple of the pictures and it'll be animated it takes my dogs are moving the living room and i'm not getting push notifications for this it's just automatically storing it in their cloud for mo for motion as you can see so it's pretty cool throughout i mean anytime there's motion it does it and if, if i said if you put it to away or sleep right here it will notify you 
Now the other really cool thing is not only can you watch your cameras live from anywhere, you can play back from the NVR anywhere. I could be across the country on the other side of the world and connected through the internet and it's gonna play back whatever you want from the last 30 days onward uh, from your NVR. Now it's a little sluggish through your phone because it's going through the internet. And that's the only thing I would like to see if you're nearby it, like we're in the house, if we're connected to the network, wish there was a way to make it uh, connected directly to the freaking NVR instead of going through the internet because that's what it's doing right now. And it's normally faster than this when I'm here. So let's see. Okay, there's, there's a front of my house last night in the middle of the night. 3 a.m. Let's see what was going on then. You can turn your phone this way to make it bigger. It's loading, loading, loading. That's why I said it's kind of sluggish, but it does work. So, I mean, what, what do you, you can't complain about that. Sometimes the, it is a little glitchy and you got to move it a little bit and it'll, there's motion there at 6.35 a.m. Let's see what it says. It'll show you where the motion is with the yellow bars. Connection timed out. So again, I said it is a little buggy sometimes. I'm being real with you. My router is on the other side of the house too. So let's look there. 8 a.m. this morning. Let's look for some motion there. The little blue or yellow line. And obviously when you're right on the DVR, you have a mouse and a monitor and it. You can review your f footage right from there. So there's 1 p.m. Sometimes it skips around and does some weird stuff when you're trying to play it back. But the fact is it works and it, you can play back anything. My router is on the other side of the house, but in the five gig five gigahertz Wi-Fi doesn't have as much penetration as the 2.4. So through all these walls and stuff, you get a little slow. I'd probably be faster if I connected to the 2.4. So there was two. There it finally loaded. There was my house at 2:04 p.m. just a little bit ago. But it's really freaking cool. If you go, if you want to record straight to your phone, like sometimes I'll see my dogs doing something in the living room. And I want to record like there. The, you can actually switch to HD too because they're switch rate to high definition, so the video is better quality. But uh, and that's why it's black and white because I have it in infra infrared mode. But if you want to record, hit record. You can start recording. You can also record from the playback too to your straight to your phone. Now, if I want to stop recording that, now it doesn't automatically save it to your camera roll on your phone. So you got to go to events and gallery, and here's what the stuff you recorded. Like, I record that. Something I recorded. I don't know what the heck that is. But anyways, here's this. What I just recorded, you gotta hit the download button. And then it will actually save it to your phone. So, here is the live video stream. I'm recording it to my phone. Out in front of my garage here. And you can see the camera. I'm gonna zoom in on that camera. I'm filming it for you. I'm cutting back and forth between these two. And you see I just drilled a hole under there, stuck the power wire through. I'm probably going to need to silicone that up. That's the camera up on my garage. And I'm over here somewhere. There I am, coming back in frame. Now, the video quality is really good. Pretty good. Especially we're filming a lot of snow out here, so the bit rate, it has a low bit rate. Gets compressed at the NVR. So the cameras themselves are sending 50 to 70 megabits a second to your router. I, can, I viewed that on the router, which is not very compressed video. So... I am led to believe that the NVR is compressing the video, and that is my only one possible critique for this system, is that they could put an option on the NVR to let you up the bitrate for better video quality and decrease recording time. Because right now, that NVR can record for 30 days, these eight cameras. I don't need that personally. That's a lot, it's a nice thing to have, but if I could cut that in half to 15 days, but get a higher bitrate, I would be happy with that. And if you don't know much about bit rates, like like this is mostly white out here right now with all this snow, so the video quality looks pretty good. Now if this was all grass, like it films grass, I'll see if I can find a clip for you somewhere um, to show you. But it gets it, it start the video quality starts to fall apart really fast when you get you record a lot of detail because it you know have enough bits to uh, go around for the video quality. But no complaints though. Like I said, for for this system, what it does, it's pretty awesome. Now this is my camera I installed right at my front door, and we're kind of backlit here. 
So this isn't normal. This actually looks a lot better without when we don't have snow, but we got a lot of white. My dogs are barking at me. We got a lot of white background going, so you can see someone can come up here. You might not actually see their face too good. So I didn't realize that. We got all this snow, we're backlit. Not really the camera's fault, any camera would do that. Um, at night though, when the night vision kicks on, it's really awesome, I'll show you some of that. And you can see how I installed this camera, I got power to it, I actually had a light out here, like this, and I never use these stupid lights. So I just took that off and I got a box, and I put a GFCI breaker in here, and stuck the cord in there, and all that. And there you go, you got yourself a power outlet. All right, so this is the, I got a camera up here on the side of my house too. You see me walking. Now the reason, I had to actually get my neighbor's driveway kinda. Unfortunately, I got one up there. Just because if you point it any more towards the house when the night vision kicks on, it's just all white and it uh, underexposes it. So I had to kind of get my neighbor's house in the picture. <laughs> they shouldn't be too mad about that. And then here's another camera. Uh, I got, and this is in the back, you can see, again, things, you know, since you got all white snow, things are looking pretty underexposed from the surveillance cameras, and I'll tell you what, they actually look really, really good when we don't have all this snow, especially, so, there's that camera, here's another camera I stuck in the back, now, this isn't ideal, Oh, we dropped the frame there, where it's going to my phone. Oh, I'm having Wi-Fi my phone problems. It doesn't normally drop. It's the Wi-Fi connection to my phone. So I'm connected to the internet through that. Yeah, so I walked over here and held it up. So it's actually the Wi-Fi to my phone, not the... Because like I said, I'm connected to 5 gigahertz network. And 5 gigahertz doesn't have as much penetration through surfaces as 2.4. These cameras are connected through 2.4. It's pretty solid though, to tell you normally. But anyways, this isn't the ideal angle because someone could come up around here and just rip the camera off, so I'm going to move it over to their point this way somewhere. But that's another one I got. And here's another camera I got. This is in my breezeway here. And you can see kind of backlit again right now. Man, this breezeway is really crappy. I got to fix it up that's off topic but we got a little water leak over there there's that camera i stuck it there to get any potential people walking in here and the camera's on auto exposure of course so anytime you got a lot of backlight like this from the snow it's not gonna look too great but so here's another camera i just stuck up in the corner of my living room and i just leave the night vision on on this one uh, just because it gets dark in here really easy and but there's some light from the TV and stuff it won't automatically really kick the night vision on so it's better to be able to see everything and keep it in black and white and kick the night vision on but here right now I could probably turn it off I don't know if I can do it while it's recording let's see device settings it will actually let me do it right in the phone let's see here night vision channel 6 always on Turn on auto, we'll turn it to always off. Let's see if it's still recording. You can hear the camera clicked, I don't think you heard that. No, it's not still recording, but you can go through here, connect, there it is, it's off. You can look at what it looks like when you turn that off. Record it a little bit. So it looks fine in the daytime, at nighttime it won't really kick on sometimes. So I just leave it on, the night vision. My dogs are going crazy. What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? I know, you're happy. You're here making a mess. Alright, now this is at night here. This is my front garage camera. Now, <laughs> interestingly enough, the freaking uh, night vision isn't actually on. Because all this white snow has my light out here bright enough to not even turn it on. So, we'll have to demonstrate night vision on another camera. But, that's what this one looks like. Alright, so here is my front door camera at night. 
Now earlier we were talking about how it was kind of backlit because it's all the white snow. But now you can see someone comes up here and get a very clear image of their face. So the camera, the night vision works extremely well. And then again, this is my side camera here. I'll be able to see someone walking down the side of the house. All right, now this is a back camera I got in the back of the house. You can see me walking up to it here. I might actually point this up a little bit. Get someone, because I'm rarely going to have someone right here. It's nice to see if anyone's creeping around the back of your house. You now you can see how the... Uh, Weirdly enough, my camera's not really, oh wow, you can hardly see the red, infrared on the camera here. All right, you can remember this is the camera from earlier. We had a little bit of connection issue, and that wasn't from the camera to the router dropping out or nothing. It was actually my internet connection because I was connected to my Wi-Fi. Um, and I turned my Wi-Fi off, so now I'm on just cell phone data, so. You can see we're recording a nice, good video here. Frame rate of these videos is like 15 frames, maybe 12 frames a second or something. Plenty enough for security cameras, let's put it that way. This is my crappy breezeway entrance camera. You can see all, all the junk I got out here. Guys, this place is a mess. But anyways, you can see the camera works really nice. I even got kind of a little shot in my garage of the when I got the door open, so that's nice. And then finally, here's this other camera at night. Also clicked in a night vision. My dogs are playing in the background, so. <laughs> you guys need to chill out. <laughs> crazies. Crazy crazies. Woof, woof. <laughs> This is my little security surveillance corner I set up upstairs in my bedroom here. And now this is the NVR you get from Funlux. You can see it says Funlux right on it. You're not really supposed to move these when they're operating. I mean, hard drives in general. It's all right, though. That's a one terabyte hard drive. And it has an H HDMI out, USB port for a mouse, and... I gotta remove this bar. This is this rack here I just got with some big box cheap metal rack. Really cheap. I gotta remove this though. But anyways, this is what it looks like on the screen. You can select numerous things. We can go down, we can make it a four camera setup. Whatever ones. We can individual look at them individually. Like this or that, blah blah blah. You know, what have you. You can also set it to rotate automatically, but I don't really want it flashing up here when I'm trying to sleep. I have the brightness on this monitor turned way down, so it doesn't consume a lot of power, and I can leave it on. I have the brightness turned way down, it doesn't consume a lot of power, and also doesn't give off a whole lot of light, so that's what I would recommend doing. Now this white NVR box they give you that comes with this kit only has HDMI out, so a lot of computer monitors, old computer monitors you might have, you're going to need a DVI to HDMI adapter like I got here. And I had to try another computer monitor first. I tried a different one I had, and that one actually did not work with this adapter for some reason. But this one works, and I got plenty of them sitting around that I don't use anyway, so fine with me. Now I've really still got to clean up some of these cables. I just got this power cable hanging here. But this is basically the setup I got. This is the Netgear router. Like I said, I've tried quite a few routers. And this is the only one I found that works really good with this set, setup that I tried. I tried a TP-Link. It's supposed to be a nice router. I'm sure the 5 gigahertz band works fine, and it did. But the 2.4 gigahertz was crappy. On these routers, when you got three antennas, these are just for the 5 gigahertz band. These don't, The 2.4 gigahertz bands are actually internal. And that's why I mounted it way up here on the wall. Because that's going to give me a nice... Hopefully a nice signal, and it actually does. It works really well. I have hardly ever any dropouts or anything. Now, location of your router is really important. 
I did have it all the way on the other side of this room, on the other side of the house, essentially. And that didn't work too good for me. So, Because all most of the cameras are way over here. On the other side of this wall is my garage over there. I got one over there. Over there, you know, they're mostly on this side of the house. So you want to centralize your router location the best you can. I also tried some Wi-Fi extenders, range extenders, so I didn't have to put my router over here. I tried those. Now, the problem with that is once you connect the cameras to the, to the system, they know to connect to the SSID that you set up to them. And with a Wi-Fi extender, yes, there is a mode where it can just use that same SSID, but it's screwy. It's really screwy. You're not supposed to do that. And it just starts to connect to whatever. And the cameras start jumping around and everything. It was got really weird. And you can't change the SSID on the Wi-Fi extender and do the cameras. I don't know how you do it. I mean, there might be a way to do it, but it seems really complicated. So I just want to get one nice router in a good central location. That worked for me, and I actually had to run a cable over here, which I don't really care. I'm not I'm not a person that's picky about this stuff. I actually like cables and wires, so hey, technology stuff's cool to me. I got a nice security system, I'm very happy with it. Now, some of the functions on the NVR itself, it's pretty solid. I have not have this had this thing crash at all yet or anything. It's been going for a month. So when you bring this up, your playback screen. You can see all these yellow spots down here are motion. And it works really well. So, well, that was me earlier out there filming. And last night, this morning, got a lot of snow. You know, so it's relatively responsive. It's not it's not as slow as I would imagine or anything. This is my living room. And I mean, you know, we both got, we got both access from our phone and this to re review stuff. You know, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool little system, like I said, to actually uh, have, have all these features for the kind of money they're asking. It's pretty awesome, if you ask me. Now another thing, I have this router set up as an access point, so I have to use another router over there coming off my cable modem into that router, separate router, and then split off of that router into this. And this is set up as an access point, just because my only cable I got coming in the house is on the other side for the cable modem. And I didn't want to run that over here and run a bunch of cables back to have LAN hardwire to my computers that are on that side of the house. So I just ran this over here, hooked this up as an access point, and it works really, really well. Now when I actually set this system up, like I was kind of saying earlier, I didn't actually have an internet, a real internet connection at this house. I was just tethering from my phone, because I got this crazy unlimited data plan for old school. So I always just use that, because these cable companies are ripoffs over here. So when I was trying to set it up in the me share apps, you go add in the corner, you go zinc, you want to add nine. If you've got the eight camera kit, you want to add nine devices because they count the NVR as a device. That's essentially how you set it up. And then it wants you to connect to a ZMD underscore zap network. You do that. And when I did not have an internet connection, what it would do, it would just take forever with the little circle thing keep going and going and eventually give me an error on the app but it would add one camera to the nvr i just kept repeating that and repeating it and it eventually i got all eight cameras now if you have an internet connection like you're supposed to like i said i would assume it would go through whatever complete process you need to now how this all works together is honestly some kind of mystery to me i understand a lot of stuff but some i mean it's a, it's a little it's a little bit confusing. I'm not gonna lie. So you add these cameras to the NVR from the app, and you got to be connected to the that Wi-Fi. But and then you also got to connect to the Wi-Fi the router. So it, it's it's a little confusing. Um, I don't know actually how to go through the ins installation process with you here. I'd like to. 
when I was changing routers, I didn't have to go back through and set it, reset it up. I would just put the same uh, SSID name and password on the new router, and they, the cameras would automatically connect to that router on the 2.4 gigahertz band. So that's all you got to do if you change routers. So no big worries about that. But if you have any questions setting your system up here, uh, just ask in the comments on this video. And I do know a lot about this system and potential little tricks and tips and stuff so I can help you out with that. And we can maybe build a little database on this video of the procedures. But as you see it is clearly working now. It has been for a month now. It's extremely solid. Like I said, it's pretty cool. Only little bug I'm noticing is okay, I can bring my playback up on here. And it will let me go back in dates. So you see I've been re I've literally been I haven't been lying. I've been using this over a month now. So I can go back to the third. Okay, and it'll pull it up on here. However, my NVR last time I tried, it wasn't pulling up. Whenever I try to click on one of these old dates, it's not doing anything. I might need to restart it. Well, that's kind of goofy, huh? Let's try to re let's try to reboot it. Yeah, and now this is another trick. If you have any uh, issues, like I was saying, I got I got this router going as an access point from another router, so it goes cable modem router split out and then my computer over there that down and down to split out to this access point so you got to unplug everything if you ever have any issues unplug everything plug in your first router like i got set up then plug in your cable modem so that will identify that router then plug this one in then plug the mvr in. it gets weird you get there's a little process to it but uh, because what will happen is if you don't do it in the right order and you got it set up like I do, it will try to, your computer or your cable modem will connect, give, give the IP to whatever router. It'll be the same IP as this and it gets, all, it gets all freaking crazy. I don't really know how to explain it. It'll try to use the same IP and all this crap. But you can see when you turn it back on, it brings the cameras right back. So that's... You know, that's nice. Okay. Oh, I didn't show you any settings in this either. What do we got? Well, this is what I was talking about earlier, kind of. It would be nice. I would sacrifice recording time. Look, I've recorded a month worth of eight cameras, and we, we've only used 273 gigs. That's an... Oh, oh, that's free space. So I've recorded a month, and we've got still got 273 gigs free. And what will happen, it'll just start recording over again from the oldest recorded video. Overwrite, you can select to stop recording or overwrite. I got selected as overwrite, which is cool. I would like to see an option to increase the bit rate and decrease, which would in turn decrease how much recording time you have. I don't need a month. It'd be, it'd be cool, but I'm not complaining. Device settings. Now here it shows you all the IPs and MAC addresses for your cameras. And then video mask. I'm not sure what that's all about. I don't know. I don't know. It looks like you can cross off some of the video and just edit it out. Event management. You can. Oh, you can intelligent recording. It probably only records motion if you select that. I don't really want that. But you can do that. Motion alarm. Oh my heaven, I never knew that. It's got an alarm in it for motion. Huh. That's cool. You can select. Sweet. So it's, it's a nifty little setup. Let's see about the playback though. That was weird. Yeah, I even rebooted it. I'm not getting any. Uh... So I can access the old dates and stuff through my phone, but not through here. I must be. Am I doing something wrong? That's odd. Now these do have firmware updates. I do believe I updated updated its latest firmwares. Let's see device general system settings automatic upgrade. 
Let's see if it's got a firmware update. I have the latest version of firmware. So if you guys are watching over there at Zmodo or whatever parent company of Funlux, the latest firmware is not letting me play back older dates. I'm stuck on today from the NVR, which like I said, we can play it back from the phone. I'm trying to click both. If I right click, it takes me back. So that's kind of goofy, but I'll live with it. And hopefully firmware update will fix that. Now you can also actually adjust image settings on here. If you bring it up, it'll bring up this box. We can adjust the brightness. Now I have I have mine all kind of tweaked out. This will get you some more dynamic range out of the images. Something like that. I figure you want to bring the contrast down to like 38 to 40 percent. Leave your saturation at 50 and then boost your brightness up to like 90. This will give you the most dynamic range out of these cameras, which means won't blow the highlights out as easily and stuff give you more detail. I'll demonstrate on this one here for you. So, so you can see from the spotlight, yeah, we blow out some on the snow, but let's just hit this on default. And now you can see like just how much contrastier this image is unnecessarily. And then let's go back to what I was recommending. We'll take the contrast down to like 38. Bump this up to like 90, and now we get a lot more detail in the shadows and actually a little, a little less blowing out of the highlights. So, a little bit of camera stuff, knowledge for you, tweaking. Just looks a lot better that way, trust me. I don't know if I can demonstrate it. There's no other good camera. I'll demonstrate on this one for you, too. I'm not bringing it up. Come on. There we go. All right. Hit it on the default. See, very contrasty. If someone was, you know, we can't even see detail over here. It actually made it way noisier, too. I don't know if you can see, but the screen's almost flickering from the noise. So screw that. We're going back to our settings here. 80, 80, 90%. Bring this down to 40, 41. I almost feel like it almost even changes it on the camera. Cause it's It makes quite a drastic change, let me tell you. So that's that's what I recommend right there. You set your cameras at I'm just about that. See, it looks we get a lot more detail.